I'm Diamond Hands Daniel Amesbury, and you're watching Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor, and former Philadelphia Flyer enforcer, Riley Cote, as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Regarelia? This is it. You got We're back. You, you we're back. You got a <laughs> guess who's back? You've got an orange sweatshirt on, and I love it. I know. And I'm not a huge orange guy, but we had a lot of people messaging me, "Why no orange?" Well, I know. I the, made them. I know the guy that manufactured them. I, that was me. <laughs> yeah, I know. I literally, you know how long it took me to sew that thing together downstairs? <laughs> oh, I know. Your Boys, sweatshop the, down there, just nasty. They asked, and we brought it. <laughs> And it looks good. good. You look good in orange. You, so? They always said, you know, you looked good in orange. Remember that orange shoot, suit you used to wear? You looked a bit like Lloyd Christmas in uh, Dumb and Dumber, but I remember when you used to rock that to the rink. You mean the purple purple one? Or I'm the... kidding. Yeah. Yeah, I knew you didn't wear an orange. <laughs> I was going to say that I Chris Mayer would love it. Our buddy Chris oh, Mayer, he, he wants loves, orange, everything. He loves orange. He wants straight orange. Skates, helmets, gloves, just mess away, Chris. He does want the the helmets though. Oh, Jock like straps. Jock straps. Yeah. <laughs> That's brutes. Debo already has them. So what are you worried about? He got on that manscape. Boom. Then the orange jock strap. Well, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you? Exactly. What have you been doing this week since I saw you? Just prepping for the pod. I know you were. Great you know. guest today. Can't wait. Yep. Talk to this gentleman. He's a he's a little wild. A little baddest wild. Baddest man in hockey. Baddest man in hockey. That's what they say. Coming off an eighteen game suspy. Ooh, we gotta <laughs> we'll find out a little bit more about that. I'm I'm not uh, <laughs> I want to hear him break down the I wanna hear a breakdown on this play. But uh first off our boy Craig Barubi was re- relieved of his duties, which I know he's our friend and everything, but I just don't understand it when you're rebuilding. Um Maybe there's more to it. I did text with him. Um, he's doing fine. He's going to get back home in the next few days, so we'll catch up. But uh, confusing to me, but, uh, you know, we're not there every day, even though I basically talk to him every day. Um, it shocked me. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I, I don't know. I, yeah. you're, you're in a rebuilding situation. Uh, but uh, you, either way, um, but you'll get paid. You get hired to get fired now. Yeah, that's you know, what, hey, listen. It, it, that's the nature of the business, and I know they're in a bit of a rebuild there or a, a larger rebuild, but, I mean, it's it's still about winning, and, you know, the shelf life of an NHL coach is certainly not as long as Chiefs been there. So right. um, I think it's just part of the it's just part, of, part of the course, you know. It's yeah. Yeah. Change, change, change the look, new voice, try and shake things up. You know, it's certainly not anything Chief's done. I mean, he's oh, got nothing not. but, you know, respect from all those players, and he's done a hell of a job from the minute he was there. I think it's just the way it goes, you know. It's just like as soon as you're not winning um, consistently. Well, let me ask you this. So you, you're not winning, but – and I'm not and I'm not putting down Army, you know, Armstrong, the GM, but like – he wants to rebuild, and he wants, you know, he's not, he didn't go crazy trying to get guys in there or whatever. I don't think he did. I know they have cap issues as well, but I, I just don't understand it from that side of things, even if it wasn't Chief. Like, yeah. I mean, if they were, like, so bad, I mean, they're a game below 500, which is not where they want to be, but where did you want to be if you're rebuilding? Yeah. I don't know. No, I, I hear you. Um I, I just think that the easy solution sometimes when you want to shuffle the deck is to you know, to make a change to show the league that you're you know you're making change internally. I think it's easy from a general manager's point of view to just gas the coach. Yeah, I don't know. It seems like it's always been a thing to do. And um, again, the shelf life of NHL coach is not like you know this is like NCAA no collegiate right you know, hockey where the coach can kick around for ten twelve years yeah. you know, at a time. So. It's just the way it goes. I think it just shows the public and you know around the league that they're 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 trying to 
make a change. I and guess. It's I funny know, it's just... on the social media. I saw it. I don't know if it was Twitter or Instagram, but there wasn't one person that I saw out of all the comments. I just went down for a little bit just to see what people were saying, maybe in St. Louis and everyone was pissed off. Yeah, I agree. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I just, I mean, who are you going to, I mean, it's like chiefs obviously proven to be an amazing coach. Right. Right. I mean, it's like, to me, if you're in a rebuild, you want to build around a guy that's, you know, yeah. has a, has a cup there, but you know, has built, teams that are highly competitive a bit yeah that being said whether it's just like a, a pr piece you know it's just like okay we're you know we're really trying to make a change here and change courses the you know change the direction of, of the course here i don't know but yeah it's really not what the chief's done he, he, right you yeah. know it's like he and you know what he may be ready for a change you know maybe army needs to fire himself yeah well a lot of people were saying that yeah <laughs> it was kind <laughs> of funny. A it. lot of people were actually saying that I mean, but uh, uh yeah building the team so yeah i mean like, he, you built the team but, you know, it is what, like you said, like Chief used to, I remember him telling Johnny Stevens all the time, do things the way you want to do them. Cause you're gonna because you're going to get fired yeah, either exactly. way. And would you rather get fired doing things the way you wanted to do them or the way you were being told to do them? That's right. And That's right. I thought that was pretty good advice back in the day, you know, um, for Johnny. And <clears throat> Chief knows, you know, he understands it, just like you said. So. He'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll yeah, he had a hell of a run sure. there. He's yeah. going to pop up somewhere. Yeah, I mean, for he sure. Is a, he, he is a legitimate NHL coach. Time will tell where he lands yep. up. And, um, you know, he'll he'll be missed there. I'm sure all the well, players will be, like, a little pissed off. that. He's yeah, gone I think all, that'll be a tough day, day there today. It's, it's tough to replace a guy like that. You, you, you know? Like a, a lot of people like that, that don't know him, yeah. you know, don't understand what kind of a human he is yeah. and what he brings to the rink every day. Like, he was one of the he was one of the few coaches, and and like if I'm a coach, I like you're gonna be pissed off some nights, and you don't want to. But I'll tell you what, man, and and I didn't have any coaches that I worked with over the 26 years that were ever like you could just tell them you just stayed away from them. Yeah. If you lost the game or or they were pissed, you just kind of stayed away. They were yeah. never rude to me or treat the staff bad. But Chief was one guy he could flip everything over in the locker room and then come out and be like, all right, boys, yeah, you know, yeah. to the staff, hey, almost. you want to yeah. you wanna go have a beer and talk yeah. about how fucking bad we are, yeah. you know? like, yeah, yeah, exactly. and, and, you know, you've, you feel like, oh, okay, he kind of, after the game, he let it go. He's able to self-regulate and, and bring then, it back down. To yeah, so back down um, to anyway, yeah. uh, wish you the best, Chief. Uh, yeah. I know I talked to you today, but um, uh, he'll bounce back. I'm not even worried about that. Absolutely will. Um, our Flyboys, uh, great road trip. Um Played in Arizona, obviously Colorado, really good team, obviously, and uh, in Nashville, and come out with five out of six points. It's pretty damn good for a trip like that, coming off a uh, bit of a heater. You know, guys been playing well, going to Arizona, and uh, went four one, and they've been playing well. I believe uh, Baller was calling him a wagon at one point. <laughs> he was not anymore. Not now. No. But, uh, no, they went in. Boys played well, won 4-1, to one, and then they, they beat the Avs, the Avalanche, 5-2. Um, that's a really big win. That's a tough place to play. Obviously, that team's very good, but um, I don't remember winning a whole lot of games in Colorado. I do remember over the years winning a couple, but uh, they got a really good team, obviously. And then in Nashville, they fought back last night. They were down yeah. two. Two rip, came back, tied it up, did did lose in, um, in overtime, but you still get that point, and it's a huge point. It could mean a lot down the line obviously so um i'm imagining torch would be happy with that trip i and would the boys. like to think so yeah i mean boys sure. are buzzing man you they look are. you see those clips yeah, before the game in the locker room with frosty's dad coming that in that was like, cool you just like just to see the energy going on in the yes. locker room you could tell that it's that it's translating on the ice like they they look like a legit team yeah you know obviously they're they're, they're, they're finding ways to win the energy that is there and you know i've talked to several people around the area like they're they're exciting to watch. They really I mean, are. It's I, like yeah. uh, it's 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 yeah. I mean it's it's refreshing and it's uh, I say we use the word exciting. It's I say it's beyond that. It's beyond what people expected this year. And, uh, yeah. But that's the that's the ingredient that they've been missing the last few well say two years at yeah. least. You know, just that, sure. that 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 heart and the excitement that they're bringing to the the rink every day. So and we've talked about it, and you've been on teams like that. When you're winning, it's fun, oh, and it's yeah. easier to work hard. And outwork teams when you're winning. Yep. It starts. I mean, we went through a few like we've talked about before, where I remember we lost ten in a row, and it was like the guys were playing their asses off, and it was just like little breaks here and there, and nothing was going our way. But they're making their breaks. They're playing hard. I mean, you. 
we've talked about it also. It's a tough way to play every game, but mm. they're doing it and they're having fun. They are having and fun. And I hope it keeps going. I was actually texted with the Brian Boucher yesterday, and I said, you got him going, Boosh. You got him going. He's like, oh, yeah, a little talk here and there. and you know. But he said it's actually fun to watch. It's it fun is. to broadcast. Um because they play so hard. Yeah. And they're hard to play against. They are, yeah. So they're pesky and yes, yeah, scoring some well, some really nice goals too. Like, you know, yeah, like for you know, sure. high compete goals and they're skating, you know, they're yeah. just, just everything, you know. They, they're they, kind of doing what you gotta do to win. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they're bringing it all together. They're bringing it together. They gotta bring it down. <laughs> they gotta bring it down. <laughs> they they had to, when you showed them the video and you broke it down. Yeah, oh yeah. Then they they, they knew. Yeah. Um got a question for you. Does the NHL have an issue? With boarding calls or boarding penalties, how know. they're calling them. I think boys just like to run guys from behind. Well, <laughs> you can't. No, you can't. Um, no, I mean, some of these, I mean, there, I think one out of the three was a legitimate, like, from behind boarding. But right. the other two we can get into discussion on. Uh, yeah. Because I that's think that's what I was going to ask you about. questionable on both sides of the hit. Right. Um, so the first one I wanted to bring up was Evander Kane's. Um, he hits Brodeen. No penalty at all. What were your thoughts on that play? I know Baller will probably put a clip up so people can see it, but you know, I jeez, I, I I try to play both sides of the fence and yeah. just be honest on like if I was the guy receiving the check and the guy on the four check, you know, being a reckless guy that I was, you know, wanting to crush guys, but also right. I th- having some bit of a brain going in there, you know. Um, that one and the cousins hit were some bit similar. I mean, Brodeen's looking over his left shoulder. He sees him. He sees him. Obviously aware of a four checker, and he goes back for the puck. He reverses up the left side, whatever he lands up doing with it. And then you know, to me, you, you always got to put yourself in a position that you're not going to get hurt, right? It's like right. you have to protect yourself, but knowing that. First of all, you have a four checker, and it's Evander Kane, who's probably going to finish it, right? Oh well, yeah, you know he's going to. You either slow mm-hmm. down to absorb it, or just put yourself in a better position to receive it. I mean, a combination of the two. So that's the onus on the guy receiving the check. You know, if I'm Evander Kane and I see a situation like that, like that's you know, especially knowing the way the game's gone in the last you know year, year, several years, and yeah. Obviously, protecting the players not like it was back in the day, where you just pulverize a guy in a, in a bad position. I think he's got to ease up a little bit and see how this thing plays out. Right. Um, you know, it's, it, if I watched it in slow mo several times. I mean, I don't think it's a, a quote unquote hit from behind. It's certainly different than in the, you know, the Eric Robinson hit, right. where his back is clearly facing him. This guy's turning to go back. He's he's, he's aware of the pressure. Um, I don't. I don't know that it's a penalty. There's no penalty right. call. Well, there wasn't one called. Um, I mean, you could you could you could definitely give him a two minute minor on that one. So right. Just, just just be like just more aware, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So maybe I'll change my stance on that. Maybe there's a two minute minor. You know that needs to be assessed there. Okay. But I but I also believe like again the guy receiving the hit like you got to be. We've talked about this. Yeah, before. I mean you got to put yourself in a situation that's safer you know like I'm, especially I'm, if you see the guy right like as a player like i can't well, talk it. on it but he does do what you're supposed to do he has a look yep so i've seen all you you know i've seen how many games usually a guy will kind of turn himself and you know you got you're going back to get that puck you got balls first of all to go get it maybe try to protect yourself because you, or maybe he's thinking well i've got my back to him he sees numbers I'm not going to get hit, but I don't know if that's the way to think about it because obviously your guys are getting hit. Yeah. Yeah, and guys are doing that as a defense mechanism. They're turning their backs which to Which I play, don't think which is I, smart. I don't think that's smart at all. I mean, you know, the uh, we'll get into it, like the Eric Robinson hit there on uh, Justin B- Barron. Like, you know, he, he it's going like a D to D around the wall. His back is facing him. Like, he's just like... He's, he's already, got a few he's already, strides he's already, away. Yeah, and he's already in position like that. He didn't turn his back to defend himself. Right. It's a little different situation. Eric Robinson's got to stop. He can't He can't run the guy over on that one. And he got a five-minute major. And I think that's major. a good call. That's a good call, yeah. Because he had strides to totally. get there, and he's at the boards, numbers. Like. Exactly. And that one's a little more clear-cut. These these ones we're talking about with uh, Evander Kane and, and Nick Cousins, like they're kind of similar plays, both going back. Right. You know, um, on the one, Brodine's looking to the left, the other one, Gerbanson's looking to the right. But nonetheless, it's always about like a- awareness of the pressure and then putting yourself in a better situation or not so vulnerable for, for a hit, right? And, uh, and, and Gerbanson on the, on the Cousins hit, 
he's a veteran. He's been around. I wonder if in his mind, he maybe he doesn't know who it is, but if he sees his cousin's eye, he's not going to hit me. But still, even for an, uh, you know, a veteran player like uh, Goody there, he... I feel like he didn't do a very good job of protecting himself. I agree. He could have turned his shoulders, been a little more yeah. square. Because I mean, he got to me, low Cuzzy, too. Cuzzy didn't go shoulder to mid back and pulverize him from behind. Right. It was actually shoulder to shoulder. Just the way his shoulder went into the boards looked like it was from behind. Um, you know, again, I would say the same thing on Cuzzy too. Like for checking that hard on a situ, you know, on a, on a guy that's going to be in a vulnerable situation, you you might want to ease up. And yeah. maybe get maybe like an eighty percent hit on it, like yeah. you know, where you, it's a little safer, because um, you get you got to play both sides. It's such a fast game, you know. The guys aren't going in there to hurt anybody, like legitimately right. hurt them. You're, you're going in there to finish your check, but um, two very similar situations, so fast. Um, but I think it's, again, onus on both guys. Knowing a guy is going to be putting himself in a vulnerable, vulnerable situation, you got to be a little more, little more mindful. Right. But being the guys getting hit, like remember what happened in the days where you put your, you push yourself up against the boards so the guy would almost bounce off you. Right. And or slowing the guy down on the forecheck and just kind of bracing yourself and yeah, going to get the puck, true. scooping it out and making a play. Right. I remember there was a couple guys back in the day that used to put themselves in bad spots. I think Yoni Pickett might have been one of them, like yeah. like two or three feet away from the boards going back for pucks. And guys are just crushing you, and you're yep. going, you know, you have that extra space to go into the boards, looks ugly. Yes. Or if you just went up against the boards, you absorb the hit, and, and the guy might bounce off you. It's just a right. safer play. So, but know, we could beat this one around all day long. Uh, to me, it's both sides of the fence. They're, they're, they're kind of like touch-and-go plays. Um uh, you know, again, because, you know, the, obviously the NHL reviews these, and if there was a suspension warranted, they would have given them one. Right. So they're obviously on this, the side of the fence where it's not that bad. It just right. looks worse, you know, and game's fast, game's physical. Again, you, you got to know where you're getting hit. Yeah. I mean, both guys shoulder checked. They knew. Right. The guys were coming. <laughs> yeah. But all, they also didn't know they were going to get absolutely t-boned for us either but again yeah. it's that's the game you're playing i mean awareness is a big 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 part of this yeah we like you said we've we've talked about that before but i wanted to get your take on it because you obviously played the game how would you uh, have played that out in men's league um in men's league well you really think you're not going to get hit so <laughs> you can't, i don't know what i would have done but i i don't think i would have I would have just gone and tried to circle around the net, I guess. But but you're also not getting hit in well, I know. But just, I know you're kidding. What but. would you do if you were the four-checker? Would you just crush them? Oh, right through the non-base. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right through the non <laughs> No, Strong that's the last thing. I don't need to go 0-5 and 1. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, another play, uh, I don't want to say it was funny, but uh, Austin Watson just absolutely shoots a clapper um, at uh, Jeremy Lozon. At the end of a five-one game, baller was it five-one? Five-one, yeah. What do you think of that? Any any gloves getting dropped <laughs> after that? I mean, one? that's one way to stir it up. It is a way. Get, get a line brawl going. I mean, you do something like going. that. Expect the, the bees to swarm for sure. I mean, uh, it was, I mean, it was it was just such a, a silly, unnecessary thing to do. You know, I mean, I understand you're frustrated. Yeah, but like, you know, like yeah. really, God like, forbid that, that actually, could have been really if, bad. if he's not doesn't see it or whatever, and he gets someone. I mean, you're. That could be ugly. Yeah, it could be ugly either way. But uh, I'm all for stirring things up and setting yeah. the tone. But like some things are just unnecessary, unnecessary, and just like the downright stupid. Like I would put that in a category. I mean, he shoots that up higher. I mean, he blow out his balls. Well, that, that's face, what. Yeah, that's you know, what who I knows mean. what you know. And it's like it, it could be a dangerous play. It's very, just like very. so. It's just unnecessary, you know. But <laughs> it's just unnecessary. <laughs> I mean, Jakey, but. when he got in trouble one time, and he's showery, he's relaxed, baby. It's unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> he's so fucked. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about uh, Dave Perron cross checked to Zub the other night. I did. He got a six game suspect. Highly illegal. It's frowned upon. It's frowned upon. In, unnecessary. In any, in any league, I want to say. But uh, yeah. I think he sees Larkins down. I don't yeah. know if he even knows who did it. Doesn't even know what but happened. But he flew off the uh, he flew off the hand a little bit. Yeah. He went after the wrong guy too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I get what he was doing. You could have done this in a little bit more manageable way, you know, without cross checking the guy in the yeah, face. Yeah, 
Six I think you're right speed. about that. A six gamer. He was emotional. Close he was to 150. He's defending his, yeah, I know, right? Gone. Gone. Down the tube. Down the tubesy. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, a little, little, obviously very dangerous yeah. play um, when you bring your stick up like that. I, I like him as a player, though. I always have. A yeah, I know. It's not, uh, it, it, it seems point. like it's out of character for him. Yeah, well, I, mean, I don't think he's ever had a suspension. So I think if he had before, if Zach Ronaldo did that. Oh, yeah. He got 15 games yeah, or maybe easy, more, but uh, he's never. I don't think he's ever had any uh, issues with the league. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was it was pretty wild. It oh was yeah, pretty wild. And, and I don't know if he meant to get that high, but he did. Yeah, he did. Either way, well, it so was, yeah, um, it just looks bad, you know, because you're yeah. coming out of the woodworks and it's like you're retaliating too, right? Right. And you're looking for for vengeance, but yeah, it's uh, it's a not a safe play. Not at all. Highly frowned upon. Highly frowned upon. Um, and unnecessary. Yeah, pretty unless unnecessary. Unless you're in the 70s. Yeah, so. unless you're in the 70s, like you said. Because <laughs> um, that would just be a standard play. My boy Patrick Kane got his first goal Oof. with Detroit. So that He's was buzzing. Cool I saw some uh, some footage there. He's cruising through the neutral first game zone, he high had, speed. Yeah, first game. Oh, he's feeling good. He looks he's looking good, good for he that is. major surgery there. Um, it was cool to see him score. Um, also, one other quick thing. Our boy Nobber. Huh. He's pushing the buttons correctly right now. They've, they've knocked off eight in a row in Edmonton, man. That's that's what you got to do to try to get yourself back in the uh, oh playoff God. hunt there. No kidding. Even though we're only in December. But, uh, yeah, the they're no, rolling the, the, right the now. The Nauber-McDavid connection back. Yeah. Back yeah. and reunited. It's back. Obviously, the chemistry's back. I heard they're back. playing Guess Who's Back in the locker room every day. <laughs> back Nauber's again. back. Nauber's <laughs> back with McDavid. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so interesting yeah, week, him. man. Yeah. Interesting week. And, and yeah, a lot of action and, and, uh, nice to see, uh, for, for Nobber. I know we've talked about him a couple weeks in a row here. All right, Nas, we're ready. I'm definitely ready. 138 baddest man in hockey. Diamond it's not you. Huh. I knew that. No. <laughs> I was aware. I was aware. I was aware. <laughs> oh, five and one. And yeah. <laughs> Why you got to bring the recce well, up all I the time? Know. I just, uh, just want to remind you. I, I, You're not I, the baddest man. I'm not you. tough. <laughs> I am a pussy. <laughs> I get beat up a lot. I've been beat up a lot, but at least I stood in there. And, and got shit kicked. And get back up. <laughs> I don't want to do it again, yeah. though. Too yeah, old. Yeah. We're ready. 40 almost. We're ready. Diamond hands. Let's, right. go. Let's go. Daniel Amesbury. Santa, baby. The season for a fresh cut is finally here with the sponsors of today's show. Our friends, Manscaped. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming have just launched their fifth-generation lawnmower to help you avoid another silent night in the bedroom this year. They are talking to you, Riggedy Riley. <laughs> oh. You gotta trim it up. Take care of your special snowflake with Manscaped and watch your South Pole shine like never before. You know the trimmer you are, the bigger it looks. Get the best stocking stuffer of all by going to manscaped.com and using code NASTY. For 20% plus free shipping, Mrs. Claus will thank you. Starting with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, this is the crown jewel of the holidays and, dare I say, the best ball trimmer of all time. The Electric Razor's advanced skin-safe technology is a lifesaver and known for reducing nicks and cuts on his Santa sack. You need to protect the sack, Rex. Got Ricks. to. Anybody in the family have too much scruff? Uh, yes, you do. I do? You do. Look no further than Manscaped Beer Hedger, Pro Kit, and Handyman Electric Face Shaver for all his facial hair needs. Dad have nasty nose hairs? Save the day with the Weed Whacker 2.0 Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer. Ladies and gentlemen, get 20% off and free shipping with the code NASTY at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code NASTY. Say ho, ho, ho to a well-groomed mistletoe with Manscaped. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Suttlemeyer. And this week, we are super jacked to bring on a guy that just belongs on Nasty Knuckles. Yes. Young man from Maple Ridge, BC Riggs. Mm -hmm. Plays... This year and last year, Dan Barry for the Dan Barry Hat Tricks. We're going to talk about the minutes, but first, let's introduce our good buddy, Daniel Amesbury, better known as Diamond Hands. What's up, brother? Hey, thanks for having me on. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, man. So happy to have you, brother. We've been talking about this for a while. Uh, a lot of people asking for you as well, uh, sending awesome. in messages. So uh, we, we had to get you on, man. You guys remind me of each other. Uh, kind of have to, we'll talk about that a little bit, but, uh, 
Uh, congratulations. Just had uh, I, I, your first son. Uh, it's my, 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 it's going to be my third son now, but oh, uh, shit. I go my bad. <laughs> well, my I, I, hang my on, fourth, hang yeah. on. It's your fourth <laughs> kid because I saw a, th- a promotion you were doing when you were doing a rough around. You said there's two things you do fucking fight. So obviously <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I mean, my um, bad. I apologize. <laughs> I, I had to run that prom- promo uh, by the wife before I uh, sent it in. Sure. <laughs> I bet so. I bet <laughs> so. I apologize. I, I didn't realize yeah. you had uh, other kids. Yeah. That's awesome, though. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's been good. Oh, man. That's that's great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I remember oh, when I made that video, I was like, hey, this is good for the brand. I show it to AJ. He's like, that's hilarious. He's like, you better show it to the old lady. <laughs> She's like, I'm okay with it. That's, it's good for the brand. <laughs> yeah. There you go. That's awesome. Oh man. Well, you, you, you mentioned that you, we reminded each other of, of each other, but, um, you know, I was thinking he's 30, you're 33 years old right now. And I retired at 28 and I can't imagine you had a hiatus of what, like seven, eight years. And then you come back. I and think it was, is it longer? Nine, nine years. I think it was. Yeah. 2014 I retired. And then last year was my first year back. I want to say it was nine. Oh man. So, Jeez. Yeah, it, was, it was a, it was a long break. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird. Cause like, I mean, I feel like that time off, I mean, obviously I wasn't beating my body up as much as I would have been. So I'm probably in better, uh, you know, my body's probably better off than, you know, how it would have been if I played the whole way through, obviously, but um, definitely still feel some of those bumps a little more than I did when I, when I uh, retired the first time there. Oh man, I can't imagine. You, got, you probably got nine, nine years of built up aggression too. Really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. Stay well, dormant. We, I, I, I was actually, so um, when I first retired from hockey, I went back to Canada. I was playing uh, senior A lacrosse. So I was, okay. that's kind of what, what kept me busy most of the time uh, when I was back home uh, up there in Canada. So I kept busy with that and then uh, came down to Danbury. Kind of AJ convinced me to come out of retirement, and uh, here I am. He's good uh, at so. that, eh? He's good <laughs> <Yeah>. at that. <laughs> yeah. Twitch your rubber arm, eh? Come tilt. Yeah, yeah, let's yeah, go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's, yeah, so it's been fun, though. We, You know, we won a championship last year. And yeah. then obviously me and AJ, all the stuff that we got going, I got going on right now with AJ doing the podcast, the talk and trash podcast and then we're doing you know rough and rowdy with barstool and like it's just been a really fun journey and, I, and i'm and i'm really happy that he was able to uh talk me into coming out here and, and going on another adventure so uh, super cool did this all come up from the uh the ice wars when you, you won the, the first and second ice wars yeah i mean pretty much like um you know when i first you know the the first ice wars when i started training like I was already going through this time in my life where I was really ready to just really jump in and try something and like swing for the fence and and stuff like that. And I was already really feeling that way. And, um, and then the ice wars kind of thing came about. And then, you know, when I started training for that, I just got into this vibration. I just got into this, this state where I was like, I'm going to do something with this. I didn't know what it was yet. And then I won the first one, won the second one. And then, you know, as I got closer with AJ, um, we started talking and, and then, you know, the opportunity came and, and yeah, it just be kind of, it all kind of fell and fell together and, and it kind of just, be, it was divine in a sense. It happened, I feel like the way it needed to. And, and I, and I truly think like the way it all happened, it was like, I couldn't even, I couldn't say no because it was just too, it just, everything, the way everything fell into place. I was like, yeah, it's, 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 a, I feel like it's a sign I got to do it. And I was ready to do it and I had the support to do it. So uh, yeah, we just, uh, we're on a little adventure here with the family. It's, uh, it's awesome. <laughs> that's super cool yeah, it's it's awesome to see you embrace it the way you have you yeah. know like you're you're owning it you're embodying it right i mean as you should as a fighter obviously you, you can't you can't be uh you can't be half ass in it but uh it's 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 like encouraging to see you know like i'm not going to call you old because i'm 41 but like you know an older guy to take a leap like that where most guys would play it safe and be like well i'm done you know and you know and, and just kind of hang tight but for you to come out of your shell and you know, you're like, you're, you're arguably like the baddest, baddest dude in hockey. And, you know, you're, you're, you're using your influence and you're just, you're just doing a lot of good stuff and yeah. you put yourself out there and, you know, props to you for, for taking that leap. Thank you. I appreciate that. And, you know, like, 
it is there is times where you think about it too you're like oh man like you know i got kids i got a family like, like i got obviously got to look out for them and, and make sure everything's good with them but you know it was a conversation that we had and it wasn't like it wasn't a calculated uh, conversation it was like hey look i think this is an opportunity and and from where i see it going and what i see nowadays with you know i want to keep doing the boxing i want to keep doing the hockey and building the following building a brand which you know, in today's day and age, and I'm sure you guys see it, like there's value in that. And mm -hmm. and the value you can get out of that nowadays, it's you can do anything with it, whether you start a, a company out, out, you know, I'm done playing hockey, I can't beat my body up anymore. Maybe I start a supplement brand or who knows what it is, but it's having that brand, there's value behind it. So it was a very calculated decision to, to make that leap and, and say we're going to do it. But um, it, it was the sacrifices that we that we made that I think is the reason that everything's kind of starting to get rolling now. Yeah. Yeah, I see it. And, and, and yeah, and I, and I can see how calculated it is because you're, you're, you seem to be very strategic with obviously AJ. I mean, he's, he's a promoter by nature and rough and rowdy. And like there's obviously a lot of thought that goes into what you're doing. It's not just like randomly swinging for the fences here. Like, uh, and it's going to continue to grow for you as you keep building your brand. You're putting out good content um and there's an appetite for it. So uh, I'd like to think that it's going to continue to grow for you. I mean, I, I was saying to Nasty before, I'm like, Man, you like uh, maybe the next step for this guy is like WWE shit. Like, this guy need, like you don't need to be like you know. Because I know AJ, AJ's involved. Well, yeah, right, that, exactly. Yeah, I'm sure you talked. You him know that it's funny you say that because like for me that was like that's like I don't know about you guys, but like watching WWE and WWF. Well, it was WWF for me. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, me that, too. When I was a kid, man, watching that, it's like, oh my god, this would be the best thing ever. And like, actually, like, it's funny because my woman always tells me that she's like, you should be a pro wrestler. Like, especially when I finally dove all in and went handlebars and mullet. She's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> she's like, you're already a pro wrestler now. Like, so uh, yeah, that would be awesome. I know AJ's got his. He's kind of in with uh, NXT and stuff. But yeah, yeah, we're we're trying. You know, I'm really grateful to be with AJ and and Jimmy even too. Like those guys are such good influences on me, and and they just. They're, they are very calculated and me and AJ are like yin and yang because, you know, uh, I don't know if you're, I'm sure you're probably maybe a little bit similar to me. Cote is just, I'm crashing bang. I'll run through that door first. Like, you know, I'm just, I don't really think I'll do it tomorrow. You know, like I don't, where AJ is very calculated. So I think I speed him up a little bit. He slows me down a little bit. It works out perfect for both of us. Cause you know, I'm, I need that. I think maybe sometimes he needs it and, 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 and it just really works out well for us. So I think, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited and I'm really grateful to be able to, to, to be with the Galantes and, and be able to, you know, grow my brand and our brand together. It's, it's really fun. And it, it really is becoming a brand too, because, uh, just following you the last couple of years with all this, you, you see your followings getting bigger. And like I said, uh, the team I work with now, uh, uh, in the NAL North American Hockey League, the uh, the Philadelphia Rebels, we go to Danbury, and uh, all our kids are always talking about you, especially Sonny the Nuble. I know I mentioned that to you off uh, off air. We're, we actually have he's got a little thing now, and it says Diamond Hands on his above his name play, <laughs> his normal name play, but he loves you and he's awesome. always talking about you. But uh, I'll tell you one thing you can do is tell them to turn the heat up in that damn barn. It is the coldest barn I've ever been in, man. I, I was telling, I have a couple of friends that live there and they go to all your games and they actually yeah. drive in. I also have a shop because uh, uh, I did equipment for so long and I, I do skates and equipment repair. And these guys drive in from Danbury like a couple times a month. Yeah. And, and uh, I said, well, is it at least warm during the fed games because i know it's pat because i watch the highlights yeah. i watch i follow you and i see all this stuff and he goes it's still cold in there yeah, okay. but it is a it's cold barn man so the other day it's, it's funny you say that because we were watching the game i'm currently suspended unfortunately and i'm watching the game and i'm freezing i'm like where am i gonna <laughs> sit and i asked like because I, I mean i you know usually we sit in our one spot i'm like I, I thought it was colder and i asked the other guys that weren't playing i'm like is there like a heater? Is there like, you know, some arenas they will have like the top, <laughs> the top yeah, right, the right. have a little heater. They're like, no, there's no heater. I'm like, all right, well, it's it is chilly. Really, I just have to buy a bigger jacket. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You have to bring your own maybe. You oh make... dude. I, now when I, I prepare now, I'm fine. Yeah. I gotta, oof. It, but I, last year, I just never forget those first time I was there. I was so excited because of, you know, going back to the Netflix uh, thing with, with AJ and his dad watching that. I was so pumped to go in there and I was following you and I knew you were there. Um, yeah. so I was like, so pumped. I'm like, maybe we'll see him, you know, like, but, um, anyway, 
some of these numbers we got to talk about here. We were Riley and I were looking at because he's got some similar numbers, but well, we were looking quite, back yeah. at uh, 413 PIMS one year in 37 games. I'm assuming you knew what you wanted to do at a young age. <laughs> if, if, if I mean, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm there. guessing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's funny because like, you know, when I was young, like I was always, I grew up, I, I feel like I just grew up around people that were kind of tough, like my friends, older brothers and stuff like that. But I loved it. Like I loved getting, you know, my buddies, my best friend's older brother, they'd beat, they'd beat us up. And I was the one kid that would come out laughing. Like, you know, some of these kids would be crying. I'd be laughing. Like, that was so much fun. And they always be like, man, you're crazy. Like, you know, and I always loved the rough stuff. And and I really did when I was younger. I wanted to play football and I wanted to box. Like, I was just always very, um, you know, just very, I love contact. And I loved, you know, that kind of stuff. And and my parents never let me box. Um, you know, probably probably what most parents would, wouldn't really want. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. I, I get that, you know, like. Um, but at the end of the day, like when I finally got to, you know, my, I was trying out for the junior team it was junior B at the time. And, uh, you know, I was kind of a bubble player. Like I didn't play hockey. I wasn't a guy that went to camps, you know, I was hockey in the winter, baseball in the summer. Like I didn't, I wasn't on the ice all the time. And, uh, you know, I was just trying to make the team and, and, uh, I ended up fighting in that junior, that my first year of junior in tryouts. And the, and I remember the assistant coach came running in this big guy too. And he came running in he was so stoked. I thought I was going to get in trouble. I literally yeah. thought I was going to get in trouble. I'm like, Oh no, I fought. Cause yeah. coming right at a minor, minor hockey, like AAA program. I'm thinking like every time I fight, I get in trouble. And, uh, yeah, he ends up being like, Oh my God, we didn't know you could do that. That's awesome. Pretty much signs me right there. Oh, wow. And then. And then once I started getting the praise for it, like, oh my God, I fight. And everyone's like, it gets the guys pumped up. The coaches loved it. The fans loved it. I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is awesome. This is the greatest <laughs> thing ever. Cause, cause I'm not getting in trouble. I always got in trouble when I fought, you know? So, right. so I really embraced it. And like, you know, the first couple of years, obviously I wasn't by any means the toughest. I was, you know, I'd take some licks and, you know, fight the middleweights, heavyweights every once in a while. And then I just, I really embraced it and I really liked it. And, you know, I remember my last year I was a captain of my team and that was the point where I had to get my, my dad was starting to be like, Hey dude, like you need to be on the ice. Stop fighting. Coaches tell me <laughs> whatever you do, don't fight. We need you on the ice. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. You know, we had a rule you fight in the last 10 minutes, you get an extra or whatever. So it'd be like 10 Oh one boom. Amesbury's dropping the gloves again. My coach is like got his hands on his head. Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> just trying to get my reps in. Uh, but, uh, oh, but man. I really embraced it and I really loved that side of it. And, and I, and I really think like just as much as like, the you know being on the offense in a fight like i like i like the scariness and the the just overcoming that fear inside of myself like i really just you know i'm sure you you can relate cote like that feeling you get even before the game it's like what am i doing like why am i doing this like i don't get <laughs> mm -hmm. like i'm such an idiot and then you get out there and then you drop the gloves and you're still thinking the same thing and then finally you engage and you survive, you're like, oh my God, I'm alive. I made yeah. it. And it <laughs> feels so good. It's like, oh my God, like, wow, I made it through another one, you know? And it's just, uh, it's something that I really enjoyed about overcoming that, that, that fear inside of myself. And, and yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it probably shows in my penalty minutes, I guess, but, yeah. uh, I really, I really, I really leaned into it. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of continued here the last season. Yeah. I, I was I was telling Riles, I was watching an interview <laughs> with you, and it, it may have been you and AJ just talking, but uh, you said something really interesting, and it, it reminded me a lot of uh, Riley. Um, he used to say, like, or he says that he he got it. He basically got into character to do what you guys do, and you kind of said you alluded to the same thing is where you're an enforcer, you're there to take up for your teammates, so you it kind of becomes a character that you are because I watch, you know, I love when you're, you're mic'd up a lot and I hear you like on the bench, someone hits one of your guys, you're always standing up saying something. He was, I mean, he was unbelievable that way for his teammates. And, and I remember Riley, as I said, at a big function we had one time back in Delaware, as he was the, everyone said he was their best teammate they had ever known because of that. And, and you do the same thing for your team. So I just wanted to ask you about like, getting into that character because it kind of is, and we kind of talked about wrestling and stuff, but you have to get your mindset, right. I would imagine. Yeah, and it's, and it's difficult. Like, you know, there's the, you got to tote this line of like, 
being a good human off the ice, obviously, which is who we naturally are. And then you get on the ice and you kind of got to go into this character. Like you're a wrestler or WWF. Like, I don't even know. It's almost, I would say it's even different because it's like, it's in, it's real. Like you got to go out there and you got to be tough and you got to make sure everybody on your team knows that you're the guy that they can lean on and that you'll make sure everybody's safe. And it's, I feel like it just naturally happens when you have that role, like you have to take on this responsibility and that switch goes on when you're on the ice. And then as soon as you're off, you're able to turn it off and kind of relax and and kick back a little bit. And it's, you know, I find it, it actually makes it easier to relax when you're off the ice because you do gas off a little bit of stuff that might be built up, but it's very difficult. And I, and I find it much more difficult uh, in today's game than it was in my last stint of pro hockey for sure, because um, you know, you can't hit guys as hard. You gotta, people are, people, fans freak out if you're too, too crazy or like, it's just like, you have to now tote this line even more so than before. So it's very difficult and it's hard to find that line and, and stay on it without going over it. Cause time to time you do get the emotions come in and you might do something that crosses that line. And, and then, you know, you got to deal with the effects of it, which is what I'm kind of going through right now with my suspension and stuff like that. So um, it's, it's really difficult, but at the same time, it, it adds to the, you know, the draw to why I want to do it. It's, it's, it's di- like that difficultness and that just the struggle of, you know, finding that line it's like it's that's a part of the role and it's it's just like being a goal scorer how that's a a special skill like what we're doing on the other end we're we're our specialty is this enforcer role it's like you know and and there's no coaches for it you know we're just doing it on our own there's nobody teaching us how to do it there's no like clinics you can go to or skills coaches you know that for for what we're doing we're kind of just figuring it out as we go and trying to find out how to tote that line and and uh yeah it's it, it's difficult uh i'd say it's more difficult now in today's game but but i mean that's a part of of what you know what i like about it yeah no i, I agree it's got to be difficult in today's day and age right i mean it's, it's like they've almost you know eliminated the enforcer completely and then you're not only still doing it but you're again when i when i watch your clips like it does remind me of myself and some of the animals that i played against because it was just like a different beast altogether right i mean i'm looking at some of these clips of, of yours and you're calling guys out and like like they're literally just giving me shit in their pants like, i mean i'm just like looking at their <laughs> eyes i'm like you know like picking up quarters like they want yeah they want, they want to look at you yeah it's just a different time yeah. in, in in place for having a guy of like your caliber i mean with that aggression and, and that will that much willingness to to play because there's not many guys <clears throat> certainly not around uh the nhl American leagues, very few, you know, like it's just like it's kind of phased out. So um, yeah. it's a, it's a different beast altogether. And to see you doing it, coming back at 33 or 32 when you came back last year and and not just coming back and doing it, but like, yeah, you know, doing it well, doing it on a, you know, on a grand scale. Yeah. And then something else I want to mention, you, you mentioned like the fear bodies associated with like the overcoming as you fight. Like I, I could connect with that fully. Like I know exactly what you're talking about, because that was like what drove me. It was like this. Like every fight, every whether I won or lost, like you, like you said, I got out of this thing alive. I'm here. I'm grateful. And that was exhilarating. Like, am I ass beat or not? <laughs> you know, it's like, let's do it again. You know, and then there's always like this like new fear or body that's being kind of addressed and confidence on the other side. It's like, say, superpower of some sort, right? It just keeps fueling you. So I want to mention that. Yeah. I can connect with that. I think like also like, man, like the, the, just the lessons, I feel like a lot of this fighting that I've been able to do over the years has contributed so much to stuff too, like in my day to day life and like why, like, I feel like, like, I, I don't think there's anything on the planet that can get me into my flow state more than a fight. Like Mm -hmm. I'm lining up with this guy and I'm like knowing like there's no distractions. Like when I'm fighting, it's just me and this guy, there's nobody else exists. And it's yep. just such a cool thing. And I find, I, I wonder sometimes if that's what kind of brought me into my spiritual side. Cause I'm like, I feel like getting in that flow state so important for me um, outside of hockey. And I, and I wonder if maybe that's just cause I've gone into it so many times into that, in those fights. I don't know, but I, I, I really, really, I enjoy it. And leaning into the character side of it's fun for me. It's, it's really cool now being able to share it because people are now seeing like how the role really is and 
how much more there is to it than just going out and fighting. Like, you know, if you can keep everybody on the ice looking over their shoulders, like, where is this animal? Yeah. And that's going to take a little bit away from them scoring goals or a little bit away from them, you know, doing what they're trying to do. They're, they're looking over their shoulder, worrying about what I'm doing or where I'm at. And, uh, you know, I've, I've been there. Like the thing is, I think that makes it probably even more hard for some of the kids I'm playing against is that, like they didn't grow up playing against this. Like the new yeah, generations right. <laughs> didn't have this. 100%. There's not, you don't see guys running around in junior doing this. Like when I was in junior, I wasn't the guy doing this. I had, there was guys on other teams that scared the shit out of me and I would have to fight them or I'd have to answer the bell. And I remember we'd go into Alder Grove. It was always Alder Grove. And I remember being in the, in the dressing room and like knowing I'm going to go out there. They had three animals that were, that were actually good players too, but you know, knowing these guys will fight anybody in the league and they're going to bark at me all game and tell me they're going to take my head off. And I'd go there. I would just, I just, I was playing DM like, okay, I'm just going to get the puck out, keep the game simple. Cause if I try and do anything extra, I'm going to screw up. Cause I know I'm worried about this guy taking my head off, right. you know, and it, it's just a, such an added effect. Whereas nowadays, I think a lot of these kids have never played with it. They come into pro and they run into a guy like me and they're just like, they don't even know what to do. And uh, <laughs> sure. I think like we've seen it last year, it was, I, it, it was a very big tool for us because, you know, especially when we got into playoffs, like some of these guys just, they didn't know how to handle it. Like I remember I got scratched my first two games in the finals. We lost the first two and then they put me in the lineup. I didn't even play a shift and we won the next two games. So it was wow. like, you know, or the next three games, we won the three, the, uh, we, I didn't play the first two. And then I, they put me in and for the last three and I was playing like crap. Cause I just came off a of suspension. So I didn't even play any shifts, barely like a couple shifts appear, maybe a shift or two a period for the last three games, but we won. And, and I believe a big part of that was these guys are worried about me sitting on the bench. Yep. You know? Yeah, totally. So, and, and it's, you know, not to take anything away from our team. Cause we had an amazing team, but it just shows you sometimes like, you know, when the other team doesn't have to worry about uh, one guy like that, they, they, they all play a little bit bigger and, you know, yeah. sometimes our guys maybe won't play as big. Right. So um, it's, it's really cool energetically what a guy like us can do and what a, what a role like that can really do. And I mean, the broad street bullies, that's a perfect example. They, exactly. they paved the way they, they showed everybody, Holy shit, this is a thing. Like this right. is actually, yeah. you know, this is a style of play that can, be, you can beat a skilled team with just intimidation, fear, and toughness. And obviously you need to have skill as well. But it was like, that was kind of one of the things probably where people are like, oh my God. And you don't see it as much now, but it's, I think, I feel like it's even more effective in today's game. If you can find that line and not cross it, it's, I think it's more effective. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I agree. I mean, I've, I've always been a believer of accountability and, and um, did the influence of, uh, of accountability on someone's behavior, right? I mean, you're, you're saying everything that I believe in. Obviously, the Broad Street Bullies, right? It was, it was obviously a different era, but um, yeah. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, a little bit of chest puffing and flexing, and 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 obviously backing it up. How much, how much that influences someone's behavior? So I, I still see a role in hockey with fighting. I know it's never going to be the way it was, um, but you're, everything you're saying is the argument of 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 why fighting should stay in the game yeah. is that there it's a legitimate strategy Definitely. it does keep people accountable it keeps people honest guys on your team play bigger on other teams will play smaller when you're in the lineup i mean i could speak for myself playing pittsburgh penguins george the rock's not in the lineup well i'm gonna i'm gonna act like do bigger donkey kong than i normally would have you know because i don't have to fight yeah. him you know but yeah. i was willing to fight him so uh it's just the way the, the psychology of knowing that you can you absolutely have it your way. No one's going to do anything or say anything because there's no one there to keep you accountable. And, you know, we've yep. seen this over and over again. I also wanted to mention, you, you said something super interesting around the, the flow state of fighting and how, you know, I understand what you're talking about. The flow state is just you and, and the other guy and no, nothing else matters. No one else matters in that moment, essentially a version of meditation flow state. And then you said it, it's helped your spiritual practice, which I find super interesting because I never really found my spiritual practice until I retired, you know, in 2010. Can you maybe dig into that a little bit and what you mean by that? Because I think it's uh, I think it's a profound statement because uh, most people don't think of like fighting and, and the word spirituality, you know, in, in the same sentence or context. Yeah. 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 So I think like, you know, I was kind of the same thing. I didn't really find my my spirituality or I didn't really go deep into it until I was retired and I had some years of, of, away from the game. But over the years of like 
talking to people, especially when you don't have the game anymore and you go through that period, which everyone who's ever played a pro sport or had a group of guys around them for a long period of time. And then that's gone knows that adjustment and how difficult it is into the real world. Um, I feel like that finding that flow state that I, I feel like that connection that I got through fighting helped me so much when I started to get into meditations and, and I was doing, you know, plant, plant, plant medicines and stuff and ceremony work. And I find, I found like, wow, once I actually learned how to drop in and meditate, I found like, oh my God, this is so similar. The feeling was so similar without maybe the adrenaline of a fight but I felt like the, the state of mind and the calmness I could find was so similar. And, and, I, and, I, and I give credit to all the fighting that I've done. And I really think that it has something to do with it because, um, you know, I feel like I, I have a pretty deep connection spiritually now. And, and I, like I said, I, I know that not everybody has that, but I, obviously that's a, to do with the journey. But I feel like a lot of it does come from that, that you know, that flow state that I found. I was able to find it so often through... You know, obviously you get it in the game of hockey. I, you get that flow state. Oh, you know, if you have life problems and stuff, I think everybody, I know, I know, I remember as a kid, you know, maybe I had a bad report card. My dad's driving me to the rink and I'm like shit myself the whole way. <laughs> and then as soon as you get on the ice, you kind of forget about it. Exactly. You know, you're kind of able to oh, take a breath and release. Well, I feel like the fight even got to me to drop in a little bit farther, even farther, you know, and. And I, and I do think that, that it has a big uh, connection with why I was able to find my vibe spiritually and, and my connection spiritually and, and going into these, you know, plant medicine ceremonies and, and uh, meditation work and stuff like that. When I first started going to them, once I found that connection where I was like, man, this really feels like how I feel when I fight, it made it a lot easier for me to do it and, and believe in it and understand it. Because sometimes when you go to those, especially when you're doing like group stuff, it kind of feels a little weird. It's, it doesn't seem that, you know, it seems a little awkward. You're kind of like, Oh, what are we doing here? We're all just going to, you know, sit and be quiet and, or whatever it is. But I found once I connected the two, I was like, man, I think I, I really love it. And, and to this day, it's it's a really big part of my life. So, yeah, it's awesome. Oh, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, we talked, uh, you know, on Instagram there a little bit before this about some of the stuff and uh, the, the peaceful warrior. Right. I mean, I can I can totally relate to what you're saying. It's really the flow state, the presence. Right. It's like you can be present, obviously, in a creative sport like hockey. But you can also flake out easily, right? If like you're not, you don't have the puck, or you're in practice and you're looking around, or whatever. But when you're fighting, there's there's nothing else to think about, <laughs> you know. Like yeah. you can't be flaking out. You may get your ass whooped, obviously. Um, so I can understand that next level of presence that you're talking about. Because um, looking back, it's probably what I was attracted to. Now knowing, you know, ha having a meditation practice and knowing this, it's a. Uh, it's pretty interesting to hear you talk about that. So we should probably connect uh, after this on, on some of the stuff because I think it's yes. it's beautiful that you're a current guy doing this, you know, being the ultimate warrior, and then uh, you know still speaking, you know, pe speaking publicly about you know, meditation and, and the plant medicine work, which is uh, you know a huge huge part of the healing work that needs to be done here. So props. Yeah, to I you. think like I think a lot of the people too, like we've talked about it in the past, and it's like I mean, mm -hmm. uh, you know, guys like us generally you know, it's, it's probably more common run into problems after retirement and stuff like that, even any pro athletes or whatever. But I find the fighters obviously have even more uh, added, you know, dynamic because guys get hit in the head and all this stuff and just the taxing that we're doing on our bodies and stuff like that. But, um, you know, like uh, it's a pretty cool, you know, once you start to get into that sort of um, circle, it's pretty cool how the world gets really small and the community gets really small and everyone's kind of connected. And I feel like we have some of those connections through, through, you know, just the game of hockey and, and ceremony work and stuff like that, which is super rad. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. yeah. You've done a Riley's done a ton of, ton of work obviously yeah. uh with that as well so that's well that's i think really you're cool. putting yourself in a position too because you're a current guy right i mean you're a current guy and you're putting yourself out there you could do a, you know i think it's always about like the the vehicle and how you can be of service right and i think you're yeah. you know you're 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 kind of building that you know in real time and you know being mindful of how many people you can influence because it's not just about the fights right that's the entertainment that's like the the the, the, the draw or the catch but you're much more than that, right? You're not just selling fights. Like you're, you're yeah. selling, you know, I think that's super important for people to understand. So I'm, I'm really, really glad yeah. that you brought this up because I think it adds another dimension to what true warriorship is. It's not just, you know, it's like, yeah, we'll, we'll be there to defend ourselves and our homes and our families. But like, it's beyond that, right? It's, it's trying to help be a ripple in, in, in this in this world and 
make change and help people out along the way because God knows there's a lot of people struggling out there. Yeah, and, and you know what? Honestly, the one thing that I find, you know, I find difficult, and I'm sure you've had it in the past too, is like, you know, we tote this line and we're, you know, it's like we're a warrior in a garden. And then you're go, you off the ice, you're able to be, you know, so calm and so relaxed and get find this flow state. And then on the ice, you got to turn the switch on and you got to play mean and you got to, you got to fight. And then you got the fans and all these people that only see the one side. And, it, and it's like, man, at the end of the day, like, I understand, like, I never judge any fan for or anybody for, for obviously judging a book by its cover. This is what you see. And especially if you do cross that line at times, people see it and they're like, oh, my God, this guy is such a POS or this guy is just yeah. a bad human. And it's like, for me, it's like, oh, my God, I wish this is why it's cool for me to be able to talk on podcasts and be able to share who I am and build a brand because it's like, at least now people can see really who I am. It's like, I have to turn this switch on when I'm on the ice and I have to turn it off when I get off. But it's like to the disconnection there for somebody to not see the whole picture and just see us when we're on the ice barking at people. It's like, you can only imagine this person's got to be a scary, mean <laughs> person. <laughs> That's just yeah. who they are. You know what yeah. I mean? So it's, yeah. for me, like a very important aspect of what I'm doing is I want people to understand there's yin and yang, there's good and evil, there's dark and there's light. And we all have to be in touch with both sides of it. Like you can't just be one or the other. You can't, you, you know, being in touch with the dark side is a good, healthy thing. And it's, it's good to, to know it's there and it's capable of being used if you need it in a situation, but you're really working from the light, you know, and, and being able to, tote that line and and show people that like that's what i want to do like from from the at the end of the day like my goal is to show people that you know you this is what how the role is this is who i am but you know if you're seeing one side or the other you would never imagine people that know me in my personal life that don't know like what i've done on the ice obviously they've seen it now i'm starting to build the social media they can't imagine when i first tell them like i was coaching my uh my daughter's t-ball this year and nobody knew I played hockey, right? Like it was like, it was a couple towns over and, you know, we're, you know, we're play, coaching these little kids. They're, you know, they're all three and four years old. And, uh, and then, you know, as time goes on, I, we became close to this one family and I tell them, yeah, I play hockey. And they're like, oh, okay. And then they come to a game and they're like, we did not expect that. And they couldn't believe it. I'm barking at guys. I'm fighting. And they're like, they were just like so caught off guard. They're like, oh my God, like we had no idea no idea and i was just and it's kind of funny because it's for yeah. me it's like it's normal for me but for other people they're like oh my god this is crazy like you're coaching a <laughs> t-ball team on sunday morning and then you're coming on sunday night and you're growling at people trying to fight everybody <laughs> on the other team telling the whole bench you'll fight anybody it's like what <laughs> like how do you do that <laughs> I, 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 so, I was telling Riley, I saw, uh, I see all your clips and stuff. And what really made me laugh because uh, it was you being yourself and, and it reminded me of Riley as well. You were standing up barking at a guy. I don't know what had happened, but you're like, I'm coming. You know, you better be ready. I'm coming out. And there's a, there's another one of your teammates besides you going, I'm coming too. And then, and then you go, we're all coming after you. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, I said, that's fucking great. We're all going to kill you. I was yeah. dying, but it reminded me of him like, on the bench. Oh yeah. It was like a real Hanson brothers moment. There. Yeah. yeah one right. Of my, one of my, one of my favorite clips. That's going to be uh, all time. I think that one. Yeah. We're, we're all coming. Oh, um, yeah. I was going to say, I, I heard you tell a story too. And you, I, I want you to tell it. Cause I'm not sure if Riley heard it, but uh, uh, you're talking about, you come to Danbury, your very first game and you yeah. you clean a guy's clock if you wouldn't mind telling that story it's pretty it's pretty calm it, yeah. it's it's more it's about the fans he oh, hears yeah, these right, fans sure. but go ahead sorry so aj calls it my baptism to danbury hockey <laughs> so he goes make sure you got to tell them about your baptism to danbury hockey so basically what happened you know i i know like from my experience the thing that i learned uh at an early when i first started playing pro hockey was come into a league at the beginning make a very clear statement, play a very hard, like a little more aggressive than you would throughout the year, but come out hard, whatever that entails, it entails. But at the end of the day, everybody hears about it. And then, you know, and then you're, you got everybody right where you want them essentially. So I knew I'm coming out of retirement. Guys are going to think, you know, I'm just an older guy. I don't, I don't still got the fire, this and that. So I'm like, okay, I gotta, I gotta make a statement here and, and play really hard. 
And I think we were up, like we were beating this team. We were up a couple goals and there was like eight seconds left in the game. Puck goes D to D. I'm swinging across, uh, across, right across the blue line. Puck goes D to D. And the guy just makes a pass up the zone and just admires his pass. And I'm like, screw it. I'm going to lay this guy out. <laughs> crush him. Crush him. Like it was a good clean check right in front of the ref. No penalty on the play, nothing, just a big hit. And he must have launched like six or seven feet right into the boards. And he's just laying there, just like, just not even moving. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I'm, I'm literally at the point now where I'm like, kind of like freaking out. I'm like, okay, this isn't very good. Like the guy's <laughs> still laying there. People are coming out. Now they're all, all the trainers are on the ice. I'm on one knee. I was like, okay, maybe I should just like say a little prayer to the universe here and like, you know, try and send this guy some, some strength. I'm on one knee. All of a sudden, I hear the crowd, section 102, start chanting, body bag, body <laughs> bag, body bag. And I'm like, what oh the God. fuck? <laughs> like, where am I? The guy's dead. Like, he hasn't gone off the ice. Be like, move your arm, move your leg. Like, I'm, I'm sitting there. I'm, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe oh. it. And I was like, to hear him chanting body bag like that, like, and the guy is oh, laying on the God. ice and. And he ended up getting up. He was good, but he was, he was, he was recovered and stuff. He was fine, but it was, it was a big oh. check. And that was my intro to Danbury hockey and, and kind of, you know, the beginning <laughs> of uh, the beginning of it for me, I actually ended up getting, I, the ref was right in front of it. No, no. He said no penalty. I talked to him after the game. No, it was a clean check, no penalty. And then uh, a couple <laughs> days later, like just how hockey is now, they end up giving me a suspension just because oh. it was too big. Oh, so that wow. was the beginning of my the beginning of my uh, interactions with the the league uh, board of whatever, <laughs> and uh, it's just continued to grow now from there. I had I had two that hit, and then the so I was suspended. I got uh, one game suspension, and then I was back the fall the next following Friday, and I laid another guy out at center ice, and it, and it, this was like it was almost it was similar. It was like it was a massive, and like I said, in the Central League days or old NHL days. It's a hundred percent clean check, but nowadays you gotta put you gotta play the puck. If the puck's there, you gotta you gotta at least poke check it, or you gotta let the guy know he's coming so he looks at you. You can't catch a guy that's not looking now. It's just it's it's and it's hard because I'm like I'm coming out of a time machine. I yeah, played 10 right. Years ago. I'm coming yeah, out of a right. time machine. I'm playing hockey. These are my first two games in. So then boom, I lay this guy out. Now eight games. <laughs> that was an eight game suspension. So oh, my first two games in Danbury, I got uh, <laughs> one gamer and then I came back, got an eight gamer and wow. then uh, I'm currently serving an 18 gamer. Wow. That's a so, definition of old school meeting new school. Hey, like you're coming out of the yeah. woodworks and like these guys have no idea. Well, that, what, what a like I say, I'm like, well, like, like I said, I'm coming out of a time machine here. I didn't play yeah. for all these years. <laughs> yeah. and, I'm like, and I said to my, my coach is like, Hey, like you got to just, you know, like you can't hit like that anymore. This and that. I'm like, Hey, I, I get it. But just like, make sure the league knows, like I'm, I'm, I'm coming. I'm trying to learn here. Like, this is like brand new for me. I can't, can't hit a guy with his head down. Like I've never heard of that. <laughs> right, like know, if right? somebody, somebody cuts through the neutral zone with their head, look, if they're looking at their skates, you can't hit them. It's like, it's weird. You know, and then, you know, I feel like nowadays we're running into a time. My last hit was, was I was on a back check. This is the one I got my 18 gamer for. And the guy turns his back, like it was shoulder to shoulder when I connected with him. And then as he's turning, he kind of puts his stick up. So then my arms come up and he turns his head and his head goes right into the glass. Like he turns right in, oh. he turns his shoulder. He was, he was shoulder to shoulder with me at the beginning of our contact. And then he turns and just his head goes right in the glass and, and then, you know, they're like, oh, well, it's Amesbury. And they had this weird, I don't even know what their rule was, but they based it on, oh, it was 12 months or 11 months since my last hit that I was just telling <laughs> you about. So they started at my last suspension and then did some, oh, we got to add 50%. Now they got 18 games somehow uh, for this suspension. So I'm out till February, I think now. Wow. Jesus, so, February. That's, that's my little, God. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah. So, I mean, but I mean, you're seeing it now in the NHL, you're seeing it at every level. Like guys are getting absolutely obliterated and it always seems to be the young guys getting hit by the old guys. Yeah. And, and uh, maybe not always, but, but it, you know, a lot of guys put themselves in vulnerable spots these days. Like it's not uncommon for a D man to make a pass and then they turn their, their head toward, they turn their, they expose their back as they're getting hit. And a lot of times it's fine. Like a lot of times it doesn't lead to any issues. It's just maybe they don't get a big enough of, or as big of a piece of you, but sometimes it ends bad because these guys turn their back and then their head yeah. goes into the glass and, 
And uh, now you're, you know, you got a guy that getting fined and suspended and you got a guy that's hurt. So, right. um, you know, we talked about it on our podcast and, and it's, you know, you're in this weird time where it's like, well, we're still allowed to hit, but a lot of guys aren't really getting hit as much in juniors and stuff. So yeah. then they yeah, get into the, right. into the pro, le- they get into the pro level and they're playing against a guy that grew up playing juniors 10 years ago. Well, they're finishing their checks, they're hitting hard and, and, you know, it's, it's, it's a, we, it's kind of a dangerous time, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> Definitely. I, I was going to ask you, um, <clears throat> like I've been, like I said, I've been following you for a while. Uh, or do you have a hard time finding willing combatants <laughs> in, in, in the league or is it, or there does most teams have a guy that has to um, answer? I mean, most, most teams usually have a guy. There's a couple teams that don't, but like, Honestly, like this year, I didn't even, I got jumped like my first, I think I've only had a few fights this year, but my first two fights this year, I got jumped. So it was like, you know, guys, I think, yeah, guys are, guys are willing. It's, it's, it is kind of hard sometimes. Like it's definitely tough to find someone that's going to square up with me and and take, take our helmets off and stuff. But there's only probably like a handful of guys in the league that'll square up and go to center with me and take helmets off and whatnot. But, um, but, you know, like, it is a tough league. Like, there is some guys floating around. But, I mean, like I said, I've, I've been jumped twice this year uh, wow. by guys. You know, I'll lay out a big guy, a, a big hit or something, and then someone will jump me right away, which I have nothing but respect when that happens. Because, you know, anybody that stands up for their teammate, I, I respect any, right. any day of the week. Yeah, I've seen one of them, at least one of those two that you're talking about, and you, you, you absolutely dusted the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even sure. Yeah, you right, do. is it, Threw it right in front of the bench right, there, I think. Yeah, right in front of their bench. Yeah, that was my. <laughs> I think that was my first or second one this year. Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what's he doing? <laughs> yeah, like, but like you said, yeah. he came in to defend a guy. Yeah. So, um, yeah. But he probably thought twice about it. <laughs> well, it was actually hey, interesting. I, when I saw that. You didn't look like you. It didn't even look like you like wanted to fight at first. You're like, what? what yeah. Are you, or you either like, what are you doing? Or like, uh, you I was sure a little bit confused. Guy? Yeah. Yeah, I was a little bit caught off guard because I'm like, what, you want to fight? Like, are you trying to fight? And he's like. Yeah, let's go. I'm like, all right. Well, <laughs> man. But, uh, but you know, like there is, you know, like there's a thing too, like where I want to, I want to try myself against like other guys too. Like, I feel like this league, I've kind of just, I've obviously kind of gone through everybody in the league and it's like, you know, I love being in Danbury. I want to stay in Danbury, but there's also an itch that I have too, where I'm like, man, maybe I should just move up. Maybe I should go to the next level. Maybe I should, you know, try try and run into some of the bigger and stronger guys. Cause I know there's guys out there in the, in the East coast league and stuff like that. That would probably give me a pretty good go too. But, uh, so who knows where next year's will bring, but, um, but yeah, that's something kind of in the back of my mind now at this point too. Well, <clears throat> I had another question real quick. Uh, I appreciate your time by the way, man. Um, you, you won the ice wars, uh, King of the rink, uh, twice. Is there any different thinking going into that? Because this is more obviously stage. It's not like, Oh, a guy hit my guy and pissed off. We've talked about that too. Like it's mm-hmm. probably easier to get in a fight in hockey when you're just pissed off and you grab a guy and you guys both go, yes. but, uh, how, like, and, and as I guess I should say as well as boxing, getting to the ring, is it a different thought process for you the night before or, or before you do it? Yeah, I think it's a little more difficult because it's, like, harder to, like – like, in hockey, you're already, like, emotionally in the game and you're able to just – okay, you just turn it on. It's just, like, an added level of intensity. You know, the intensity is kind of already there, so it kind of hides your anxieties a little bit. I find, like, the boxing and the, and the uh, you know, the ice wars and stuff like that, like, organized, like, events like that, it's definitely, like, an added anxiety a little bit more because it's just, like, that's all you're doing, you know? Like, everybody's training just for it. Everybody's coming in a little bit more prepared. And then there's the added part of it. Like, I mean, Ice Wars we were doing, I think, I did three one-minute rounds. So, like, if Jeez. you think about it, what is that really? That's, like, six hockey fights or, yeah. or maybe yeah. even more. You right. know what I mean? Hockey fights are, like, what, 30 seconds on average, maybe even less on average. So, it's, like, you know, you're fighting a guy six times pretty much in a row. So it's like, there's that too, cause you're getting tired and you're getting hit. But, um, I think there's definitely more anxiety. Like the ice wars, I, there was a tournament too. So you fought numerous times, um, in one night. So that was probably the most intense thing I've done was just the tournament or the first one, the tournament, but, uh, even the boxing, you know, there's lots of anxieties with the boxing and stuff like that too. And, uh, yeah, I think definitely feels a little bit more intense, um, going into that. But I mean, at the same time, when you know you got a heavyweight on the other team, like, you know, you, you kind of get the same feelings the night before sometimes, yeah. you know? 
So yeah. I'll, I'll yeah. be going through yeah. YouTube videos, and if I know there's like a big knockout, I'll just skip that one and watch the next. <laughs> yeah, one. yeah, right. I'm studying video, yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I I saw you say too. You've had like six or seven times where you had your nose broken, Riggs. You had yours, you had yours popped a few times. Oh, just a few, yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably a few undiagnosed. I could probably use another surgery or two to straighten this bad yeah. boy out. I like to breathe out of my right nostril. You know, it, it feels oh. good when you get it finally fixed up. Oh my gosh! Oh, uh, you breathe again. Yeah, yeah. I got the Jello nose now, but oh it yeah. Was, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty. It goes down. Look at that. Yeah, there you oh, go. That's, that's like, they do, they do, that's like they grass. Josh, Josh Grant. Grant. I don't know if you know who Josh is, but uh, yeah. his is the yeah. same way. Yeah, no cartilage yeah. left. Oh, yeah, there's not much in there. It's kind of nice. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. He's no. I was just saying, it's kind of nice, nice now, though. Oh yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it's nice yeah. and straight. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. maybe maybe. No, I can. No, I can. Though. I can. I can just get a good punch there, and I don't really. It doesn't break anything. Yeah, it's like right? Josh. Yeah, it's like grass. I have a. Punch. I have a picture. I have a, I have a picture of my buddy punching me, and his knuckles just completely squishing my nose. It's like the <laughs> best <laughs> picture ever. Yeah, I got it. Oh, my. Uh, fr- it's on my fridge at home. That's awesome. Maybe I should have broke my nose a few times. Hey, like, yeah. A little cushion there. <laughs> Uh, I was going to say, uh, how, how did you get roped into the ice wars? Was that something that you saw marketed and then you're like, man, I'm signing up for this. Or did someone reach out to you? Right yeah. Out of the Me and my friends always joked about it. Like since I was in junior, like, oh man, like if only there was like just a hockey fighting sport, you know? Cause it was like yeah. this weird, this weird niche skill. Like obviously it, it's for something, but it was like something that I loved and something I, I, I actually like. I wasn't just like fighting in hockey. Like I was trying to get better at it. I was like going and grappling and I was going and boxing. I was like trying to do things and trying to find ways to be better studying fighters and, and learning different styles. So it was like, I really always took it so seriously. And I wanted to see, like, it was just a thing me and my buddies always talked about. So AJ posted something online on the trashers page and my buddy who we used to always talk about it with sent it to me right away. He's like, dude, as if this is actually happening. <laughs> and then I, I messaged AJ right away, just started hounding him. Like I still, I've, I've gone back into our messages. You can see if I go all the way up to the very start, it's probably like 20 unread messages. Me, me to him, sending him links to my hockey fights, lacrosse fights, everything and i'm just like hey man like these are the guys i fought you know i'll fight anybody any weight class don't care and he's just like he said finally he had to he's like okay well you were just kept kept buzzing me kept buzzing me finally i looked into you and uh yeah that's what it was man i I, as soon as i heard about it i was like i have to be in this like nobody 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 came and found me i i uh i was hunting them down and trying to make sure i was a part of it and uh yeah me, me and AJ actually just announced uh, it's going to be coming out on Sunday, but we have a big announcement coming up at our, on our show on Sunday, and it's something related to uh, the fights. So. Oh, nice. Awesome. Nice. That's, That's awesome. so cool. What a great story. Yeah. They talk about resilience. Yeah, yeah no like, shit. Anybody listening, it's like yeah. you, know, you got you to beat the doors down. You know, opportunities don't just, uh, you know, come come yeah. delivered in your doorstep. I, you know? I got a quick question, too, about um, about your team in, in Danbury. Do you guys – this might be a dumb question. Do you guys, like, practice daily? Are you guys at the rink daily or is it yeah. the guys have, Oh, yeah. you are. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We're on the ice every day. So it's like, you know, it, it's, it's minor pro. So like, you know, there is obviously like senior hockey levels, which is probably like where you, we, where we guys are working Monday to Friday and then they practice like once a week kind of thing, but we practice every morning. So we're on the ice every day at 10 AM, um, you know, Monday through Thursday morning skate on Friday. And then we play usually every Friday, Saturday, it's right. pretty much okay. our thing. So we got some guys that work too. After that, they'll go work, get some hours in and stuff too. Um, for me, I just train people at the gym, do like strength and conditioning and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, man, it's, 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 uh, it's full time. So yeah. we're on the ice every day, which is, That's which is good. Like, I feel like I need as much as my body doesn't really feel like it appreciates <laughs> it. Like if I take one week off or one day off or whatever, you, I, you go out there and you feel like you haven't played in, in years. So when you're on the ice every day, it definitely helps, helps the game and, and stuff like that big time. Yeah, I'm sure. And you got an 18 game suspension here, so you probably need to, to get uh, <laughs> to stay stay uh, stay in shape. If if you need, if you need a sparring yeah. partner, if you need a sparring partner, not I got me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not me. Yeah. I mean, ninety night Jim kite real quick. Oh, yeah. I'll be sleeping. So, they, uh, so I don't know. They give me these 18 game suspensions. The problem is, I just come back tougher because now I have all this time to box <laughs> yeah, right. and grapple. I, know, I have all right. this open. I have all these open weekends now. I'm boxing, grappling. I'm on the ice. Like it's just like, man, I'm gonna come back way tougher every time they give me a suspension like this. I'm like, all right, well, I guess it's boxing season again. Like <laughs> uh, it's hard. It's it's 
it's hard to box it during the season when we're on the ice every day, but you, you know, you know what it's like. It's like your, your body is just, you're barely healing enough enough to get on the ice the next time. And then you got to play on the weekend. So for me, it's kind of, you know, obviously I want to play, I want to be there going to the war with the boys, but um, I just take advantage of everything right now. I know I have a limited window, you know, at my age, I don't have a ton of time to do what I want to do, especially with the, what I'm doing. I'm, I'm fighting on the ice, off the ice and boxing and stuff like that. So it's like, I know my window is small, so I'm taking advantage of this. And, and it kind of is, it's it, in a sense, it's a, I, I'm just grateful for everything that happens to me. So in this situation, I'm grateful. I get to box on the weekends. I get to sharpen the tool a little bit. I get some sparring in on Sundays and, and you know, that's going to what it's going to be till uh, February, I guess. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's, it's, it's, it's wild, man. Like yeah. it's so cool though. I, I, I love it. I love it. Yeah, man. Thank you. We, got, uh, of- we got, sorry, Go we got, uh, the, the, yeah, sorry. We got, uh, I think uh, it's I locked in. AJ just messaged me today. It sounds like I'll be fighting, uh, at the end of January, Barstool, Rough and Rowdy in Providence, Rhode Island as well. Oh, no way. Sweet. Okay. I was, so, that, yeah, that, we, maybe have to make a track. Yeah. We might have yes, to go to that. Definitely. Yeah. That would be, it, cool. it, was, that would be was, awesome. I was going to say too, your, your, uh, ring, your ring attire was top notch, bro. <laughs> like the, the pay, you know, I yeah, said, yeah. man, the Jersey had the sparkles. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it was, oh, yeah. yes, my daughters yeah. would say bedazzled, but yeah. it looks oh, yeah. sick in your trunks too, yeah. man. You, you yeah, brought it. Was, you brought the whole thing. It, it's fun, man. Like that's, you know, that's another part of it. That's fun for us. Like AJ's AJ's the man when it comes to that stuff. Like he had, those are the jerseys that they wore. Like those yeah. are the original jerseys, which is so rad, man. Like I think that might've been Jimmy. His dad. I think that was Jimmy's idea. I'm pretty sure to have the sparkle. I think he's, that's what he's saying, but man, it looks really good. It's hilarious. And, and so that went good with the style. I had the glasses on and the, yeah, the yeah, shirts and yeah. stuff. AJ designed the trunks, so I'm excited. I think we're gonna have to design some new trunks for uh, for this fight. So yeah, super cool. That one that was like I, one of the fastest knockouts, I guess, oh in, in rough and rowdy. That, that dude was, was sli- he sleeping, was sleeping, man. Sleeping quickly. He was sleeping. <laughs> so it was like 12 seconds, and it was you know the guy's such a good dude, but it was like when we first found out, it, AJ calls me into he calls me into the gym. He's like, hey, you gotta come down here. I, I know who you're fighting now, like because it's you don't know, like with especially with boxing, it's not like you get to pick. You know, especially like at these levels, it's just like they're just going to give you who they give you and you find out and you're like, you get, you can either say no or you fight. It's either you don't fight or you do. This is your yeah. guy. So I show up at the gym and, uh, you know, AJ's like, hey, this is the guy you're fighting. And, and AJ kind of like had a set down. He's like, I think we might go to jail for this one because he's like, I don't know. <laughs> because I, I, but, you know, these, this able guy had like five fights and rough and rowdy. And they were the promoter was like, are you sure? Like, because I have zero ball. I never boxed before. I'm just a hockey yeah. fighter. So it was like, you know, it was kind of like this guy's got experience. I got zero fights. They were asking me if I was sure I wanted to do it. I'm like, dude, I'll fight anybody. I don't care. I'll do it. And then AJ's like, all right, yeah, we'll do it. And like, are you sure he wants to do it? They're like, yeah, he definitely wants to. I'm like, all right. And then I, I think he, and it's classic for me. I'm just like a hockey fighter. I come in, my hands are down. I get tagged right away. And all of a sudden I'm like, okay, I'm in a fight. And then I <laughs> yeah, go and, 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 and Molly up. whopped him. Yeah. <laughs> like a yeah, flurry of like so, 10 in a row. It was a flurry. It was, <laughs> it was a flurry. Oh, yeah, not to- yeah. You could hear uh, Wit, Wit was there too. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 I, I dropped him right onto his right onto him and Portnoy's lap. Like he, the guy's head was like right in front of him. Yeah. yeah right when you walked in, Witter said something to you. He goes, this guy's legit boys. Yeah. He took the jersey out. And he's like, <laughs> and I, I know Witter pretty well. Uh, I had him as a player uh, with team USA a couple of times. Great guy, but it was funny. I I said to him right away, I was like, that's Witter. I didn't realize he was, he did that for oh, yeah. uh uh, for the boxing, but that was cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was hilarious. He see, I remember he goes, I had cupping on my shoulders. Look, yeah, 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 yeah. Cupping. yeah. He's, he's like a real fighter. <laughs> he's legit, man. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, I, what I found the funniest about that fight is you mentioned like you know you're as a hockey fighter coming in. This guy, you know, like his nickname was Assassin King. If I think <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah. yeah. The Assassin King. I mean, what do you mean you're oh, not yeah. ready to fight this guy? Right? <laughs> you know, a nickname you know like what? that, you should be. <laughs> those, those brothers there's two brothers the, the able brothers zach Abel is who i fought and those brothers they're just massive fan favorites 
massive fan favorites guy people love them and i don't know how many fights they've won in the last uh handful that they've had but the fans love them and uh they got it they're great promotion so they're they're a lot of fun and they're good guys too so. yeah cool that, that that whole uh the whole event is so fun like even just to watch i just watched the last one it's like a comedy show with fights yeah, you know, it's like yeah. it's you know, and they and they have like near the end, you get all the really good fights, and yet the, you get some ridiculous ones where guys have never been in a fight before. And made it, like you get all levels, all the way from top to bottom, and it's yeah. a really fun show. It's it, they're really they're really a blast to be a part yeah, of. Yeah, I've watched I've watched a few of them. They are they're they're caught. What Bill Burr did one? No, did he really? Your boy, yeah, oh. Bill Burr reached no out way. to him about the mushroom space that Riley you oh, know, nice. is, is in and all that. Awesome. Uh, yeah. um, and he <laughs> held one and. He's just funny. Just he could say anything. Just the way he delivers, it's oh, pretty yeah, funny. But it was it was a good one. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, we enjoy watching it. So that's good. We got one coming up. Maybe we can make the old nasty knuckles track. Yeah, do you have, do you have a date on that? That would be awesome. Ah, uh, I I can get it to you. I'll just okay. have to double check. I just don't want to say the wrong date, but I want to say sometime around the twenty eighteenth or twentieth or something. But I'll confirm it for you and I'll send it to you as soon as I know and. Uh, yeah, it should be really fun. The last, my first show for Rough and Rowdy was in Providence, the one that we were just talking about. Oh, cool. And there was like 9,000 people there. It was, uh, it's where the uh, Providence Bruins play. Oh, yeah. Be the Dunkin' Donut Center or something? Yeah. It, you, yeah, it used to be called the Dunkin' Donut Center. It's something else now, but but it was awesome. Great venue. Yeah. The place was packed, like huge oh, following awesome. out there. So so it should be really fun. And I think we'll probably, me and AJ will probably do some something to get some of the Danbury fans up there. Because it's, oh, yeah. I think it's on a night, we, we don't have a game that night. So uh, we might be able to get a pretty rowdy group up there. That'd, <laughs> super that'd cool. be awesome. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Uh, super cool, man. Well, uh, we, we really, really appreciate you carving out the time, man. I know you're you dropping your parents off at the airport. So, the, you know, uh, much respect for, for, for carving out the time for us and, it's been awesome. Yeah, yeah great talk to you. I, I feel like I, I could keep going, man. I know you're busy. I, I could talk <laughs> to you for a few hours just about everything. And um, But we appreciate your time, brother. And and congratulations on your fourth kid. Yes. Not your first. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> um, but we, we really appreciate your time, man. And, uh, and yeah. best of luck. Keep it going when you do get back in the lineup. But enjoy the boxing in the meantime. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. I really do. Thank you for having me on. I'm like super stoked to be connected with you guys. And um, yeah, definitely stay in touch. And if you guys are up in Danbury for games or whatever, definitely let me know, especially yeah. if it's in, uh, in between now and February. I want to I'll sit in that suite. I want to sit in that suite where Jimmy, I, right. I'm on the bench and I see go. it. And I'm like, the whole time during the game, I'm like, fuck, that's where he was. You know, the elevator. The I, yeah, man. Right on the glass. Yeah, yeah. right yeah. there. It's awesome. But yeah, yeah. man, thanks super so much, cool. brother. I appreciate you guys. Yeah, thank you again for having me on. Appreciate it. All Likewise. right, man. Take care, man. Talk to you soon. Yeah, you too. Big thank you to Daniel Amesbury. What a beauty. Diamond hands. Oh, man. He's wild. He reminds me a little bit of you when you yeah. were uh, coming up through the ranks there. Yeah, I CHL. see CHL. Yeah. Yeah, I... Uh, we kind of follow him since the uh, the, the ice uh, ice wars, yeah. and um, you know him coming back to pro hockey and doing and his boxing, thing and, yeah. like we talked about. But the Definitely. guy likes to fight. He likes to fight. Yeah, man. Uh, I'm glad it's done for me. <laughs> no, I'm this like guy's going I, full it's, full it's, war. It's uh, there aren't many amazing. people that really enjoy it. No, not like that. No, not like that. Um, no. They they admit it when they're done, though. Yeah, you I know, know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but but. Awesome him to join us and talk to us. He's uh, all like I said to him. All the kids on the our team there with the rebels, they they love him and yeah. call us Sonny Danuble Diamond Hands now. And he's the smallest guy on our team. So, he, yeah, so but he's got the he's, he plays like he's six foot two. Yeah, he good, honestly good, does. South Philly, heart. my man. He's South Philly guy. Love yeah. Sonny. But um, you know what it's time for? What's that? It's time for the clear room questions. Ooh, let's go. And it's brought to you by clearroom.com slash shop. Go there, 35% off. Put in the code NASTY2023 and PA only, but get on it because it's delish. Delicioso? Yes. Holidays around the corner. It now. is, and I'm making some stuff up, and I'm oh. going to post it. You'll see. Wait, do you see what I got? Oh, some man. berries, some fruit. Oh, it's almost juice? like Phil Jungsy with the clear. Oh, you like but the But Sudsy's going to be in charge because oh, we know. We can't have that. Yep. Uh, well, we can if aggressive. there are women. Yeah. <laughs> if it's a big party, the more you drink, the better I look. That's what I tell them. It's pretty strong philosophy. And yeah. when I shave that beard, you're going to be just as handsome as you are now, but more. Oh, okay. I well, think you know what I mean. 
Debo said you got to shave him. Anyway. All right, but let's gotta... get to the clear room questions. Baller, what do you got? Matt Trey over on Instagram. I know Matt. I know Matt. He wants to know who pays for the equipment players use and how does it work with endorsements? Actually, that's a good question, Matt. And it surprises me that you could come up with that. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. He's, he's a beauty. Uh, actually, the players do not pay uh, for their equipment in the National League. They don't? Uh, they do not. Even if you're uh, an endorsed athlete, say Bauer, we know you had a little CCM deal. Um, the, the players do get some stuff back from companies. Obviously, the bigger player, I want to say, you know, you get a little bit more, but... Uh, the team's still responsible for everything, even if a player's endorsed. So um, the teams pay for everything, man. It's uh, budget's pretty damn big. It's a lot bigger than when I started in ninety three, ninety four to where to where it is now. But uh, yeah, the players don't pay for anything yeah. unless it's something. That, there's been times where a player will be like, "Can I get this? Don't I'll just buy. I don't care and do it." But the the team pays for everything. It's a good question. Though. Yeah, and the endorsement deals are obviously on a spectrum. Yeah, I wasn't on the same endorsement deal as Ovi. Look, not as Ovi. No, I was getting a little less <laughs> from CCM. Just a little less. Uh, a lot of merch. Yeah, a lot, a lot of merch. A lot of money towards the old RBK store back Fe- in the day. <laughs> the RBK <laughs> store. Well, look at these. Look at these uh, cooking tools. What were they uh, the, for the for the grill? Oh, but but they're made with a stick. With an RBK oh, yeah, stick right, and yeah. the green gobsy. Oh yeah, the green gobsy. Oh, gobby. Paul, you got to find that green goblin. I wish you had one left. Probably do somewhere. I hope you you got to find it. Yeah. But yeah, the the deals are different for every guy, and they. They've kind of gone down. It also depends on what market you're in, an yeah. A, B, C market. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, good, great question, but the players do not pay. That's right. Chicken Pig Hog over on Twitter. He would like to know your thoughts on the Flyers' new locker room, and what are your thoughts on the previous style compared to the new one? Well, I think to keep up with the Joneses, everyone's kind of going into that oval room, and I think it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think they did a phenomenal job. Yeah. Um, it's funny when I was still there, we were working on it. Uh, we were doing the blueprints uh, for it, and it was um, from what I saw it was it was pretty similar. But I'm sure they they you know it was three years ago, so right. they probably made some changes to it. And um, Tricky Ricky there, uh, the new uh, head equipment guy with Tuna and, and the boys, they may have made some different changes from maybe what I had or I had in mind, um, but it, it looks great. Yeah. I mean, it's it's top-notch. Um, and, and like I said, every team's kind of – you kind of have to do it. Yeah. It's – you know, it's not like college, but if you see these college oh, rooms, the college I mean, they're nicer than a lot insane, of yeah. – Yeah, but you're recruiting. That's more of a thing for recruiting. But believe it or not, you know, Riles, like some – you know, you bring in a, a free agent guy to show him around and you show him that, that practice facility – is amazing oh, yeah. that, that they did that we flyers did and then now uh this at the center it's like a new building and you know it's nice to walk into something like that so oh, i think they did a great job with it that's that's my opinion yeah i agree i mean hell it's of a awesome. job yeah the amount of detail and yeah just thought put into it i do like the oval guys don't get lost in the locker room you can see kind of everybody, yeah right that's in the corners true. kind of guys maybe guys get lost a little bit but uh, and it yeah. sucks too like if people don't realize when you have a square or a rectangle room you end up if you have a full room at, at some point which we would do in the playoffs you got guys kicking each other in a corner right because right. you're but, but with an oval room yeah, which is obviously point. the way to go now it's you're you're never kicking anyone that's right so they did a well great job out. One final one from J.R. Weed 4 over on Instagram. If a player is traded, do they take their gear with them? Well, so when I was still there, and, I, and <clears throat> most teams have two sets of gear, we would always send their shins, elbows, everything underneath. And if they did have black and white helmets, we would usually, you know, if the team did. But usually we kept the pants gloves helmets unless a guy said hey nas can i yeah. take my game stuff because we would let them but no one ever really asked to do that so no they don't now at the end of the year say you're a free agent yes you take everything yeah um and i would always wait to see where that player would sign and i would send their 
shin guards, shoulders, elbows, cup, you know, for their practice set. Because, like I said, every team, for the most part, has two sets of gear unless, I know Detroit, I don't think they do because they have a practice facility mm. inside of theirs. The Devils used to. They don't anymore because they practice in the same building. Yeah. Uh, and I believe Columbus is another Columbus, team that yeah. does that. And, and Edmonton as well, right? Edmonton has a practice site in that building. I, I, eh, I may be that. wrong, but I thought they did. But anyway... If a guy was like, hey, I want to take my flyer stuff, yeah, we usually would give it to him. Yeah. But uh, most of the time, they didn't. Hmm. So, good question, yeah, OJR. Good question. Yeah. Sick fuck. <laughs> I know him. All right. Well, that's a wrap. It's a wrap, boys. Clear questions in the books. Yes. 138 in the books. Yes. And until next week for 139, be sure to subscribe, comment, ask some questions, engage. Until then, stay safe, knuckleheads. See ya.